This is another boots flip. We find in Article 210.63 that we are required to have a receptacle outlet within 25 feet of our heating and air conditioning equipment. Can we do that with the home that we have in this drawing? Let's take a look. As you see, we have the AC on the master bedroom side. And then all the way on the kitchen side is where the outside receptacle for the back is going to be located, near that patio door. Well, if that's how we're going to wire our house, we find that that receptacle is 48 feet away from that air conditioner. Being 48 feet away means that we cannot use that receptacle as a receptacle for our servicing our HVAC equipment. So we will have to install one next to our air conditioner. Moving into Article 210.70, which is the last article that we will deal with in Article 210, we see that it's required to have a wall switch controlled lighting outlet in every habitable room and each bathroom. There are exceptions to this code, and in other than kitchens and bathrooms, one or more receptacles controlled by a wall switch shall be permitted instead of an actual light fixture, which means in kitchens and bathrooms, we have to have a light fixture that's controlled by a wall switch. Let's look at our drawing. You can see that everything colored in blue is an area where you're required to have a light fixture that's controlled by a switch. If you look at everything that's colored in red, those are areas that you would be allowed to use a switched receptacle. As far as wall switches go, we can use occupancy sensor switches instead of a switch as long as the sensor is a switch and it's in the location that a normal switch would be in. So you can't just put an occupancy sensor in without a switch in those rooms. And now, Article 220. That's right. We are now out of Article 210 and have moved into Article 220. Let's start in 220.5. This gives us our nominal voltages that we have to use for calculations. The word nominal means in name only. Our nominal voltage for a dwelling unit is 120 to 40. Now that doesn't mean that we might not have 112 volts and maybe 220, 228, somewhere in there. We don't really know exactly what we're gonna have at each and every dwelling unit. So we have to have some sort of benchmark to base our calculations on. So what do we use to figure our calculations with? Well, we need to figure our lighting load for our dwelling unit. And in 210.12, it lets us know that the floor area for each floor shall be calculated from the outside dimensions of the dwelling unit. And specifically for dwelling units, when we calculate the floor area, it will not include open porches, garages, or unused or unfinished spaces that are not adaptable for future use. Let's take a look at our drawing. We can see with our drawing that we have some garage space that encroaches on our rectangle of our house. We have a porch that encroaches into the rectangle of our house. So what we need to do is divide this dwelling unit up into smaller rectangles. Let's look at the largest area. This is 58 by 22, and it is 1,276 feet. This area is 22 by 12. In this area, we have 264 square feet. This area next to it is 240 square feet. It's 20 by 12. And then this area here, is eight foot by seven foot, which makes it 56 square feet. Our total square footage for this residence is 1,836 square feet. Now, what do I do with the number 1,836? 
Well, let's look in table 220.12. We find in that table that for a dwelling unit and our lighting load, we need to use 3 VA or watts per square foot. Well, what does that tell us? That tells us the total wattage that we need for figuring our branch circuits for this residence for our general lighting load. So we take 1,836, which is our square feet, times 3 VA. That gives us 5,508 VA, or watts. Now our nominal voltage is 120 because we're talking about our general lighting load. And we saw earlier in our code book that we can't have any lighting in the house over 120 volts. Well, due to that, we know we can use 120 nominal voltage to divide into 5,508, which gives us 46 amps. Well, we'll be using 15 amp breakers. So we'll divide 46 amps by 15, and we get a little over 3. So in this dwelling unit, we're only required for the general lighting load to have four 15-amp circuit breakers. So you may be wondering, what is all included in the general lighting load? Well, first of all, we have all of our regular receptacles that are in our dwelling unit. Anything that's not in the kitchen or the laundry. And we also have in Article 220.14J, we have three sections. And in those sections are included, number one, our receptacles that are our GFCI for our bathrooms that we find in Article 210.11C3. In J2, we find that it also includes our receptacles that are outdoors and in our unfinished basements and garage areas. And this calculation also includes all of our lighting outlets. Now let's figure out what else we need to add to our calculation to finally get our feeders figured out. We're only going to go through part of it in this class, and then we will go through the rest of it in another class. So in Article 220.52, this is our small appliance and laundry loads. So 220.52A is our small appliance circuit loads, and it tells us that we have to calculate 1,500 volt amperes for each two-wire small appliance branch circuit. Well, we have to have two of those in our calculation. Let's move on to 220.52B. That is our laundry circuit load. And in our laundry, we have to calculate a load of not less than 1,500 volt amperes for one circuit, and that's for the laundry branch circuit that we're required to install in our dwelling unit. Now, let's look at how to put this all together. All right, so here is the next step in putting this all together. I have 1,800... 36 square feet. I take that times my 3VA. That gives me 5,508VA. All right, we already knew that, but we're using this for our feeder calculation now. Well, I have two laundry appliance, or two kitchen appliance branch circuits. So that's two times 1,500 VA, that equals 3,000 VA. I have one laundry circuit, and so that's 1,500 VA. So I take that, and now I have a total of 4,500 VA. I'm going to add that to my total for my general lighting load. That's going to give me 8, 
zero, 10, carry the one. Now I have 10,000, eight VA. Now, what do I do with that? I want one of you to come to me before class and tell me what the next step is. You'll find it in your code book. So let me know. Well, 